I've been farming for 42 years. Central South Dakota, we're in the center of the continent, so we have all of the challenges, the extreme heat, extreme cold, it can be extremely wet, can be extremely dry, and everything in between. I farmed 14 years conventionally, and I always knew I was doing something wrong. The challenges we have, we were just always fighting with Mother Nature, and 28 years ago I just got rid of all my tillage equipment and went straight no-till, haven't done any tillage since. Since then, the challenges we've had have become easier. I mean, we've had 500-year rains, extreme heat, extreme cold, and, and uh, when you're no-tilling and doing uh, the soil health stuff, that makes all that stuff easier. The land is more resilient. A lot of the problems just go away. I mean, the, the second year I was no-tilling, it was like the 10th of June and the ground was saturated. And we had three and a half inch rain in the morning, three and a half inch rain in the afternoon, and a three and a half inch rain before dark. And they had no runoff. That was the second year I was no till. That really got me sold on the idea. I had, had all my ground covered with residue and, and just did not have any runoff. And we've had extreme droughts. We've been drier different years than it was in the 30s and still raised a fairly good corn crop. My long-term goal is to build soil. For the first time ever since I've been farming, I had a tour out here and we dug two soil pits. And in this particular field, when I started farming, I know on the top of this one little knob, I know there was probably less than an inch of topsoil. When we dug the soil pit, we found six inches of topsoil. I was shocked. I, I knew I was doing things the right way, but this really reaffirmed that, that I really was doing things. And I mean, we're not talking sustainable here. We're talking regenerative. Terry's a good producer to work with. He's always willing to try new things. So that really helps when we're trying to address resource concerns. We can work with about any practice uh, we have in our toolbox. So we've worked on a lot of different things, cover crops, grass plantings, wildlife habitat. With all these good things that I'm doing, I mean, you can see it in the, the insect population, the, the bird population. I mean, there, there's thousands of doves on the place this year. I think a lot of that is due to the healthy soil. Good stuff just happens when you have soil health. I've got a huge interest in wildlife, especially pheasant hunting, and to a lesser extent, deer hunting. I put some of my marginal land into CRP. I started out with some little CRP patches in some wetland areas, and right away the pheasants showed up, and then I needed, I needed some winter cover for them, so I planted 25 acres of CRP trees. These small patches work really well because you have a lot of edge effect. I've got the nesting cover, I've got the winter switchgrass cover, and the winter tree cover. I've kind of got everything that covers every possibility, no matter how bad the blizzard is, or how hot the summer, or whatever, the, the pheasants are going to survive here. Healthy soil makes healthy animals, makes healthy food. All this ties together.